Ah, doornail bed. Dang it. I will say, I thought about running out here last night and throwing it on the trickle charger, but I didn't do it. You can't jump start a Lamborghini, or you shouldn't jump start a Lamborghini or any car really without charging it up nicely first. Fortunately, they've made it fairly easy to access. That beep is supposed to stop. It's all right. So let me tell you a little bit about this car as we let it charge so that we can take it for a drive. So there are 4,099 Mercies, and of those, not many of them were built in this ultimate specification. This car was ordered brand new by Ralph Lauren. He ordered two identical ones and didn't take delivery of either of them. This one was sold then through Lamborghini Manhattan to another guy who just drove it around like a normal car. He would crash it into stuff, and if he needed a new part, he would buy some cheap aftermarket thing like this SV knockoff rear bumper and ducktail spoiler. If he broke the front bumper, as he did right here, he would take a can of Rust-Oleum and just spray paint over it, because who would notice that? He put a really bad laser jammer system in it, so there's cuts everywhere, there's wires everywhere, there's a lot of things that you don't want, so it is in many ways a restoration project, but it's a car that deserves to be restored. And that's what I'm gonna do. Now, I'll be honest with you. I bought the car planning to paint it orange because I thought hard about painting this car orange when we painted it from black to Verde Draco. I don't really like black cars. Now, matte black is different and you can now use matte clear bras and things like that to make it easier to live with, easier to maintain. But honestly, it's just, it's not really me. I don't see myself as Bruce Wayne and so I don't need a Batmobile. Um, I've got to fix the rear uh, wings there, the bat wings, they are broken, stuck up. There's just a lot of stuff to fix. It needs front and rear bumpers. Obviously, it needs a hood as well. Trying to fix that junk doesn't work. He broke the bolster on the seat. Ralph Lauren didn't order it with interior carbon, which was kind of a shame. But this car and its twin that Ralph Lauren ordered are the most expensive manual LP640s in the US. They even have, you can see, the transparent engine bonnet, which almost none of them have. Super cool, very annoying because it's at an angle that it just reflects the light right into your eyes as you drive the car. But, you know, at a nice dusk drive, there's nothing better. And especially in Georgia, where we have like four weeks a year where the temperature is just perfect for a convertible, you got to have one. The car is honestly one of those things that every time I come out here and see it or take it around the block, and I haven't driven it all that much yet. It took forever to get the title. It took forever to get it processed. It took a little while for me to get it to pass emissions. So nothing's been terribly easy in the four or so months that I've owned this car, but there's just a lot of things wrong with it. And that's okay. I mean, if you ask me to paint a car, that would be the outcome. If I broke the mirror by crashing into something, I would have left it too, but at this point, again, the car has just gotten so valuable that it makes a lot more sense to put it back to stock. And so I'm kicking around different ideas. I might even send it back to the factory and let Lamborghini do it there. You'd pay a premium for that the same way you would through Porsche Classic Center or whatever else you might get a high-end car recommissioned or gone through. But, you know, when I had this car repainted, the outcome was great, but at the end of the day, I, you know, this one deserves a bit better. But let's think about how much that's going to cost. The front bumper, before you install and paint it, is $18,000 of carbon fiber. The rear bumper, $24,000 worth of carbon fiber. This is an OEM level paint job. It cost me about $25,000 when I had it done, and they broke the windshield, and they needed a lot of spare parts, so call it 30 all in. You know, by the time we do all this back to gloss, probably do need to buy new $4,000 each mirrors, get all this the right way and service the car up because once the car started to become valuable, the guy stopped driving it and spray painting it, which we are thankful for. And so, you know, all in, 100, 150,000 bucks. And, you know, certainly I'll still be equity positive in the car at that point, but I'm not just sitting around here trying to spend $150,000 on a car that drives wherever we're about to take it. So for a little while, it's going to stay like this. This is his biometric safe. It may or may not have something I'm uncomfortable driving around with in it, but I can't get it open. And it is bolted through the floor. So 
a project for another day. Terrible drag racing Toyos. Uh, it's not a 300 horsepower underground car, guys, but nicely curbed and again painted matte black. And why wouldn't you just throw the center caps away? This, this gap, this gap's not supposed to be there because this isn't supposed to be there and this is an aftermarket piece of garbage. But legal, legal as of now. This, as you see, is in contact there, so that's melting. That was broken before I just did that with my foot, but it won't matter. This will be behind me in the Vinwicky set before too terribly long, I'd like to hope. He tinted the light, headlights, taillights, and we got most of it off, but not all of it. It's a process. We're doing all right. We're about 70% charged. That's usually enough to get a Mercy to wake up. Let's see how she goes. So just in case we don't visually sell exactly what's going on in this moment, let me paint you a picture. It is an April evening in Metro Atlanta. It is 75 degrees. This car is covered on the inside and outside in pollen, and it is just dark enough outside that everybody around me can't see how bad the cosmetic condition of this car is. I have a flowery shirt on, a gated manual transmission, and 12 cylinders. Oh, and carbon ceramic brakes. <laughs> oh my goodness. Look at that. I can sit up straight. I can't see anything because the windscreen frame's in the way, but who cares? Listen to it. <laughs> Mechanically, this car is all there. I would roll up the windows for the sound quality, but the only level darker than the tent on this car is the black paint that he put on the bumper. Uh, you can't see a darn thing. And so, you know, I would also drive it like this, but I'm, I'm taking care of you there on the audio. But regardless, this is the car. I mean, I love the coupe, I love the SV, but if I'm honest, this is the one. Now, of course, you can't really use it because you can't park it anywhere because there's no useful roof. And if you have the roof on, you can't go more than 130 miles an hour. And so what good is that? But on a night like this, <laughs> It is everything you want. With the E-Gear cars, brilliant as they are, you always have to kind of make that apology for them. You say, yes, yes, it does have this old flabby metal gearbox, as Clarkson would say, but this, you don't have to apologize for anything except for how awesome it is. Of the 10 of these that exist, all but one or two are really with collectors that have vowed to never ever sell them. The last one to transact was a trade, but it was somewhere well over a million, maybe a million too. But I have to say like, relative to other cars that you'd spend seven figures on, this thing rocks. It is so good and there is nothing like it. I don't care if you have something that has more carbon fiber or twin turbo chargers. I didn't like, this is how a car ought to be. Nothing sounds better. Forget your Courage GT, forget your LFA. A Mercy is the best sounding car on earth. That's why I have three of them.
my first LP640 was a Roadster, and I found that I drove it about half as often as when I owned coupes, just because the roof makes things really, really hard. Uh, but as an extra car, if you if you can have multiple supercars, has to be, has to be, and you sit up straight. Look at that. Can't see, but we'll live. nothing better than that. It's kind of ridiculous to have three mercies and probably even more ridiculous to claim that they're useful for different things. But on a night like tonight, this is exactly the one that you want. And honestly, I think if the other two had to go, I think this is the one I'd keep. So I suppose that's whatever the verdict is, but I'll now leave the uh, lights off. I will put it on a battery tender and I'll probably get it out and drive it tomorrow. Thank you all for watching. Have a great night.